is a good honor to be here with, with all these fine writers from so many countries, many of whom have really uh, supported me here on the West Coast, which is my home province. Um, just one sentence about why I said Canada, my second mother. Uh, my, my own mother passed when I was uh, 23, and uh, just uh, a single mother with two little toddlers at her knees. And when I thought about it now, nearly 50 years later, Canada is the one that has looked after me ever since. Canada shared much laughter with me as a child, splashing my rubber boots in tiny creeks and later nose pressed against the window, trying to count stars, gobbling wild blueberries, not collecting them, and building a snowman with a carrot nose. Yes, carefree days floated in Smithers, B.C. Soon I was six and planning to be in charge. Now, in 1942 it was, my next town was a one-room school, grades one to six, and my sister sat nearby in row three. She helped me to avoid the wooden ruler on my palms as I dreamily stared at the big world map, thinking that I'd visit all Canada before I took on the continent. My mom explained with my baby brother born that now, I had to be big, listen, and learn. Much new stuff was exciting, so school became my favorite place, even over exploring our wilderness. Next, we moved south to near the U.S. border with surprising schools, big schools. Exploring, I learned that a third of all Canadians then spoke French. I was still innocent of the suffering worldwide, and I asked, why do we have rations, food coupons? I mean, we were never hungry as mom made great meals from our big garden. My home and school got more serious. It, it was hard not being uh, important on a global scale. Reading was my addiction with free library books and school texts. There was no TV yet, no computers. So I gobbled up as much as I could about Canada. I soon learned how lucky we were as the newspaper pictures showed hungry, homeless children running in battle zones. My, my parents worried about invading countries, especially bomber planes, terrible atomic ones to burn up a city. I knew Canada had many mines and forests and grain fields and seas of cod and salmon and even big cities that I hadn't seen, and massive mountains. Yes, Canada had half a continent to protect from these nightmares arriving by warships. My mom tried to calm us, children, while my dad worked at the local smelter making heavy water for the A-bombs, Trail BC. I yelled, stop making bombs. I don't want even one rose bush to burn up. Mum used sports team contest to explain to me team fist fights that lead from games at school to more greedy demands of adults. Wanting to rule by taking another country's profit just for themselves. She was always for justice. She was always for justice and compassion all her life, against the selfish greed that was causing this violence. My decades of teaching English and to international students in Toronto, plus my world travel, taught me how lucky we are with our Canadian leaders, our various prime ministers. Yes. We should adopt the peace pipe rituals of the First Nations, taking more pride in being a justice-seeking nation, with only our peacekeeper forces being sent overseas. I'm proud that Lister B. Pearson, our past Prime Minister, taught the world to believe in the need 
for the United Nations Assembly. I'm proud that our last armed invasion was in 1812 into the United States when we were still part of the European War. Most of our family tree ancestors arrived here by boats or planes via the Atlantic, the Pacific, or the Arctic oceans in the past two centuries. Today, Canadians demonstrate that more than 100 different cultures and belief systems can work together in peace.